Hey everyone, uh, I thought I'd do a quick video on how to insert some of uh, these flat headed studs uh, into a Dillinger 5. See these little studs with the flat head and the carbide tip? <coughs> um, quick method to insert those studs into these Dillinger 5s, these 45 North Dillinger 5s that have uh, stud pockets. Um, the two types of uh, studs out there. One has like a sort of a screw, large auger type screw head. You won't use these in this because they won't hold. Um, they're not, the base isn't wide enough. So anyway, uh, let me just get the uh, stuff that I'm gonna use and show you uh, the tools and the process that I have involved. Okay, so first off, I use this thing that I call my stud pick. All it is is a brass tube insert it into a wood dowel that's rounded around the edges so it's not as hard in your hand. Um, I use this Gorilla Clear grip glue that you get from Home Depot. So you can both sides so you can actually have a good look at it. Um, uh, here's the, uh, here's the pack, like, studs. What I do is I buy a pack of these off Amazon Here's the uh, part number. Here's the part number. <coughs> These are the tungsten and steel. And I, I open them up. I think I bought four or five packs. I open them up and I put them into a box like this. And I, I kept the label just in case I needed more. What I'll typically do is pour out, pour a bunch of them out into the studs so I can you know easily grab them. And then, uh, oh. I just use a glove on my right hand because I find after driving in, you know, a few hundred of these things. So just one of these, you know, big box store type gloves. And then people want to know why do I use Gorilla Glue? Well, it's not for the glue, but what's really good about this is uh, it acts as a really nice lubricant. Now, before I put this on, what I'm going to do is I don't stud the entire tire. What I do is, this is Dawn's bike, this is mine, I've already got mine all studded up. You can see there's studs here, then I put one, then I go to two studs, then I go to one, and I have this, supposed to have this alternating pattern, right? Now, the other thing is, I also do uh, sort of an alternating pattern on the outside ones. So this, this tire actually has, what's it, six rows? There's an outside row of knobs, a slightly displaced inner row, then there's a left side lined up row, a right side lined up, and then the slightly displaced center and an outer set of knobs. What I'm doing on Dawn's is, okay, this one down, so you guys can see. What I'm doing on Dawn's is I do every single one of the center ones, and then I do every single one of the outer row. And then depending on how many studs I have left, <coughs> I'm coming back in and I'm gonna do alternating of this sort of middle row here. <coughs> I've done a front tire where it's every single one of the centers and every single one of the outer. I'm doing the same thing on the back and then I'm going to go back later and do the alternating set. And if I have any left over, I'm just going to fill in on mine. Now I'm not, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. I'm not having riding issues. Like my grip is great. Um, my issue right now is just trying to find the right, the right tire pressure for this because I find I rode with this down at 3 PSI on Sunday and it just about killed me. Um, so I'm gonna take it up to about eight and see if that makes a difference because I'm wasting way too much energy on a soft tire. Now over here, we have a set of the original Colossus, the Maxxis Colossus tires, which I find run a lot better at low PSI. Down to 3 PSI and they feel great. So they probably have got a slightly tougher sidewall. So who knows, right? All right, anyway, this is this is how my process works. <clears throat> what I do is I, I get the tire up to about 17, 18 PSI because it's a lot firmer and easier to work with. And then all I do is I hit about six of these at a time with this. Put the cap back on. And then I grab the studs, I slip in the end here. In. As simple as that. 
and then I sit here and I oops sorry and I mindlessly push them in see simple as that now what's what's really good about the glue is sorry what's really good about the glue is it dries clear and disappears so you know it's just it's not invasive it's not toxic it doesn't interfere with the uh, rubber compound it does the job it's supposed to do you know and it, it'll take me about an hour if I did uh, if I did uh, this these tires hold 258 I think studs Oops. and I'm in no rush not like I'm riding in half an hour I gotta get these studded up um, but I just take my time when I roll through them and I think that when I did my bike I was sort of messing around with the pattern probably maybe did when I was uh, doing my bike I did 150 in each tire just to see how many I needed and then I bought a set of 400 for Dawn which is still going to be short if I do all 258 but um, you know I think I'm going to give her a little bit more of the, the spikes just so she's more timid um, about the riding so just to keep her safer mentally uh, make it easier for her so there you go so that's six of these with me yapping away. Now I'm just gonna sit here and, and get the rest done, work through it, probably take a break, uh, and then just uh, sort of race through the video. No point in spending hours and hours watching me put studs in a, in a tire. You guys just need to go do this yourself. And this is the Gorilla Glue that is sort of, uh, as far as I'm concerned, safe for the rubber. You can use anything else, Let's just do this. Get it done. I'm not here to play with cameras. I'm here to put the studs in the bike. Okay, there you go, first row done. No idea how long that took, probably 20 minutes, right? So if you think you're doing the same thing, 20 minutes on each side, center is 20 minutes, 20 minutes for the outer, 20 minutes for this mid row, you're gonna take about an hour to get this done, which is absolutely perfect. Okay, so like I said, we got the entire center two rows done now we're gonna do the entire outside row Get some out. Go ahead. yes and I did take a break for lunch so it is now 11 minutes after two we're gonna let's let's do straighter we're gonna do this outside row Okay, so that's this side, and it's 29 after 2. That shows just how fast this is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a zigzag pattern. And I'm done. So uh, every three, so basically I have just sort of gone alternating and that's it. And that's how you put this many studs in a tire. I think it was very effective, it worked. So what I'm gonna do is, 
I'm gonna move over here and I'm gonna finish my backpack. I can put some more studs in there. Anyway, you guys got it? You got it? You got it? Yeah? This hat is because I need a haircut. Okay, that's the only reason. So, thanks for watching. Go stud your own tires. It's not that hard. Uh, makes it safer when you're riding out there in Canadian winter. With all that ice that's sitting under everything, these will keep you on the wheels, not on your ass. Thumbs up, subscribe. Thanks to my Patreon subscribers. Thank you very much. And stress less, ride more. See you guys on the trails. Hope we meet up. Stay six feet apart. Take care. Stay safe.